quickly talk about uh, generating different collections and also um, templates, template parameters that then generate to generic types in Java. Um, so first of all, collections. If you would like to have uh, a patient record that has a list of prescriptions, this association here is doing precisely that. So it says a patient record has zero too many prescriptions, which in the code generation, if we quickly uh, run this again, which in the code generation boils down to a list. So if I go to my info, uh, and as a patient record has a number of entries. No, that was the wrong one, prescriptions we said. Uh, here, then you see it exactly, it has a list. But it has not only a list, it has an e-list, and that's a specific uh, e-core EMF type that is used for all collections. So also if you generate a map, it will be an e-map and so on. Uh, initializing that is a bit tricky. So uh, if you want to say here prescriptions is new e-list, it won't work for the same reason it doesn't work in Java because this is a, an abstract type um, that cannot be instantiated. So you have to choose another one. And the, the, the basic type in, in EMF is simple as that. It's called basic e-list. Um, and once you import, it will work. So that's how you initialize a list. And then you should be able to work with that just as with the regular Java list. You can, of course, also build your own subtype to it. Uh, now, that is pretty easy. One interesting thing that sometimes comes up is uh, what is the difference between this arrow and adding an attribute? And as a matter of fact, there is no difference. So you can also add a, an attribute here saying, uh, we call it old prescriptions. And I say this is of type prescription. If I find it, add to my sub package. Um, and then I add the multiplicity. I change it to zero to many. Uh, and if I make this a bit larger, you will actually see that the star has come up here. So it, it is now a zero to many. Uh, so an attribute in here, a property. And this means exactly the same as this. The difference is only that here I have a different name. Um, but if I generate this, it will simply generate me a second. Uh, collection, a second list of prescriptions. So here you go, here you have the old prescriptions. So these are interchangeable. Of course it makes the diagram in a way a bit less readable if you don't have the lines. So it depends on what you're out after. But especially if you have primitive types, for example, if you want to set the type to integer, this is the way to go. Um, now, for for this here, for, for generating collections from the association, it's important to know what this dot here means, because this means that the association end, so basically the thing that points to prescriptions, is owned by the patient record. Uh, and in terms of code generation, that means the, the list, the collection of prescriptions, zero to many, will be saved, it will be a part of patient record, so it will be generated as a, as a list. If I remove this, if I say the owner is association here, uh, it still says zero to many, but you note that the dot has, has gone. Uh, if I regenerate this, my property will disappear. So now you see there's only the old prescriptions left, the other ones are gone. So that's important to be aware of. Uh, the same goes, of course, for the direction back. If I want that prescription has one patient record, then I also have to set the other end here to classifier, and then I get the dot on the other side as well. So that, that is an important thing. Uh, now, generic types. Uh, sometimes you would like to have a data type or a class that is uh, that has a template parameter. So for example, we want to say a record entry has a certain template parameter. Uh, to indicate, I don't know, maybe how severe it is, how important it is, just some integer value. Um, and of course in Java you all know that you can simply add to a class something like uh, e, 
And this is, for example, how all the collection types work. And then you can initialize it with a certain class. Um, this is also possible in UML. And in UML, is called the template parameter. Uh, and to do that for a class, we basically add a redefinable template signature. Uh, and up, if we go to the title box up here, you, you see that we get the plus. And once we click, we get this ugly box. Uh, that's simply how it's defined in UML. It's not very nice, but it serves its purpose. Uh, and then if I click on it, it says own parameter. And I can simply say add a classifier template, uh, template parameter, so a class basically. Um, and then I can add a default type for it or a parametered element. So in this case, I can say maybe I want to add a class here. Uh, and I want to put it into here. And I'll call that one E. And now you see that here I have this classified template parameter and it says the parametered element is E, which is my class down here. I can also move the class under the template parameter to sort of hide it away from my view here. Um, now I hope I did everything right because this, as you see, this, this includes quite some steps and sometimes you just forget something. Um, but if everything worked, my uh, record entry should now be generic and that's exactly what happened here so now I can say uh, I have a generic type and of course usually that includes that you have a lot of methods that for example return a template uh, something of the type template parameter and so on and that's uh, that's quite straightforward so you could just say my method here has a return type uh, return and I would like to return e and then you simply have to find it in the hierarchy. And now it's under my record entry. So I can just select it here. And then my method will indeed return E. Um, and that's already it for if you want to, for example, have a list of, uh, of these template parameters. You can do it the same way as I just described in the beginning. You can just uh, create a property uh, with this type and then simply set the multiplicity to zero to many. Uh, now let's generate this as a last step. And as you see, I have now my list of template elements or my e-list, uh, and I also have my operation that returns a template parameter. So this works fine.